My name is Melanie Turner and I am a candidate for a specialist degree from Kennesaw State University in Instructional Technology. I currently work as an Instructional Technology Specialist in Moultrie, Georgia and this is my capstone action research project. Is blended learning the most effective format for teacher professional development? In today's educational climate, teachers spend a majority of non-instructional time in meetings. An informal survey of teachers at most any institution would reveal that actual content planning constitutes the smallest portion of their contract of working hours, and most of this work is being taken home by conscientious educators. As more and more demands are put on teacher time, there is a need to take a look at what format teachers find most efficient and motivating for professional development. Ongoing education will always be necessary, but professional development providers should plan training that minimizes classroom interruptions and maximizes teacher learning. Delivery format is an important component of professional development. As a provider of instructional technology PD, I plan to examine how best to utilize teacher time and increase motivation. This study seeks to determine if blended learning, a combination of face-to-face -face and online learning, is a preferred format for professional development with teachers. If so, what factors make it appealing and or motivating? Which teacher subgroups such as age, gender, or advanced degrees are most likely to engage in and benefit from this training format? What are the teacher's qualitative perspectives on using the blended format? In my experience as a teacher, face-to-face -face training represents the largest slice of my professional development experience. In a large rural district like Cockwood County Schools, district trainees can pull teachers from as far as 20 miles away and interrupt instructional time due to their synchronous nature. Erickson wrote of a similar space, time, and resource challenge of rural special education teachers across the nation. Colleges and universities seem to be catching on to the online learning trend by involving professors in these type of courses. One University of Central Florida case study reported positive results of a move from face-to-face -face format to blended. Their faculty perceptions about the new course's effectiveness in helping them learn new techniques increased by 22.7%, while the overall course satisfaction increased by 12.4%. At the opposite extreme in PD lies the purely online class or community. This format allows for a wide range of participants and its asynchronous nature facilitates participation at any place and time. In fact, the 2010 U.S. National Education Technology Plan recommended that schools and districts work to ensure that every teacher has the opportunity to take online learning courses. However, the effectiveness of purely online opportunities can be argued. Participants in one study tended to improve their content knowledge when they were involved with offline communities as well as the online professional development. Professor Amy Lay and her master's students concluded that the mix of synchronous and asynchronous communications of blended learning could enrich online communities. Lessons learned from student involvement in online components can also be applied to teacher professional development design. In a study of three different blended opportunities for students, Alston, Weidman, Murphy, and Lupshinyuk discovered low teacher involvement in discussions as a common problem with online courses. Face-to-face -face meetings proved essential to improve the sense of community. A case study of students at the New Jersey Institute of Technology revealed that 60% of survey respondents preferred blended courses to purely online. Most students perceived distinct educational benefits in terms of flexibility, convenience, and effectiveness. An interesting study by Alston and Martha revealed that high-achieving students were the population most satisfied with the blended learning format. Low achievers tended to prefer face-to-face -face instruction. To address my research questions, teachers were surveyed online about their dispositions toward the three training formats. Aside from the demographic information requested, the survey questions have accompanying Likert scale choices regarding the three different learning formats. Participants also had an open-ended area to type in qualitative comments on the topic. To address the results and analysis of these surveys, I will change over to an infographic. Let's take a look at demographic information first. 
You can see here that most participants in this study were female. The most common age ranges were 41 to 50 and 31 to 40. The most common teaching experience level was 6 to 10 years and most of the participants held a master's or bachelor's degree. Each participant completed an online survey about their preferences for face-to-face, -face, hybrid, or purely online professional development. The only negative responses related to the purely online format of professional development. One of the interesting findings of this study was that two out of three of the male participants strongly preferred face-to-face -face training. Most of the teachers of English language arts, 67%, strongly agree that they prefer the blended format. No other subject area grouping expressed an overall preference. If numbers are assigned to the responses according to the scale below, only the last item, I prefer this over other learning formats, has a difference of more than five points. In fact, if you average the scores for those items, the face-to-face -face format has a mean score of 100.25 and the blended format has a mean score of 99.5. The largest discrepancy between these two training types is the last item. 16 participants agree or strongly agree that blended format is preferred, while only 9 teachers answered the same way for face-to-face -face training. I think that you will find that this research breaks certain stereotypes about educators. Of those surveyed participants in the 41 to 50 years old age bracket, 88% indicated that they strongly prefer the hybrid format, while 100% of teachers in the 51 to 60 demographic answered the same. In the youngest set of teachers surveyed, 20 to 30 years old, no pattern exists for learning format preference. One might have assumed that this age group would be most inclined towards blended and or purely online based on their generation stereotypes. Most of the teachers whose highest degree earned is a bachelor, which is 75% of the population, prefer either face-to-face -face or hybrid learning. However, 69% of those who have earned a master's degree strongly agree that blended learning is their preferred format. The single teacher participant with a doctorate degree expressed a strong preference for purely online learning. The demographic data suggests a gradual preference shift from face-to-face -face training to hybrid to purely online training as teachers pursue advanced degrees. In blue, you'll see one example of a qualitative comment left by a participant. A blended environment could be more helpful because it gives the participants face-to-face -face time with the instructor to get straight answers while allowing the participants time to get their work completed on their own time. In conclusion, sufficient data exists here to rule out purely online courses as an overall preferred format for educator professional development. 16 out of 23 of the teachers surveyed, 70%, indicated that blended learning is their preferred format. I feel that this figure is conclusive with regard to my small set of participants, but I believe that a larger sample size would be required in a future study before generalizing these results to all educators. This capstone project required an exhaustive research process and analysis, however the results were very exciting. These findings can be applied to my own line of work and help add to the small body of research on the topic of blended learning with educators.